Lightning struck, and the ancient dragon was defeated. The noble knight was weary of this fierce battle, which lasted for a day. This is the scene at the end of Return of Night, Volume 19. After this, we are shown a letter stating that the author has to interrupt the issue indefinitely on this volume. At this point, a butler named Dame knocked on the man's room, telling him that a letter had come to him, to which the man began to shout that the author of the book should not have interrupted the issue at this point, for at this rate, he would never finish the work. Hi friends, if you like watching my videos, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, put a like, and do not forget to click on the bell. Enjoy watching. Dame walked into the room. The man didn't understand why the author of The Return of Night wasn't going to stretch the plot into a 20th volume, because he was so eager to find out what would happen to St. Elizabeth if she was alive and when they would meet again, and so much more. The man was considered the best groom in the entire empire for his looks, intelligence and calm nature. Dime had served him since childhood, and so he knew the man inside and out. The butler gave the man a letter that bore the name of Emperor Suburo Merkan, which made him immediately realise that it was another marriage proposal. He had no intention of breaking the promise he had made to his father, but if they were still destined to be together for the rest of his days, he at least wished to choose his soulmate himself. On this day, in one of the luxurious mansions, the only daughter of the Weber family, Alicia Weber, was informing her readers that she had to interrupt the publication of the book indefinitely. The girl heard every day that she had to get ready for classes before it was too late, do for the family what she had to do, and then she would get her freedom, and many things like that. An older woman told Alicia that writing and volunteering were off limits until marriage. In her opinion, the girl was already at the right age, but she didn't even show up at social events, so she didn't receive any wedding proposals. Alicia objected to the woman, saying that she was not doing anything wrong and she could help the children, but she did not want to listen to her, advising her to take care of her family first. The girl's mother said that she had long ago spoken to her father and now she had no more indulgences and if she tried to disobey, she would be locked up in a convent. After the conversation, Alicia was imprisoned and painted portraits of her in beautiful dress and makeup and the maids watched so she could not write anything. Alicia could not leave it so easily, so she ordered her maid Lily to get ready to leave and contact Kiri, for she would go to the tea house. The girl wished to find someone who would not interfere in her affairs, would be slightly indifferent, independent and self-sufficient, respecting her hobbies. One day, when Alicia was very young, her father gave her a quill, saying she could write anything she wanted with it. The man gave the gift because he knew Alicia liked books, so she could write whatever she wanted. The man's wife did not understand the usefulness of this gift, but the man countered that as long as his daughter liked it, he would not care. As soon as the girl started a diary, she immediately asked her brother for help because she wanted to practice writing letters, saying that she would not distract him from practicing. Alicia's mother recognized that her handwriting looked elegant, but still she thought that writer was a despicable profession, so the girl should have focused on learning etiquette. After talking to the woman, the girl went to the library, where she found a very exciting book, very different from the old-fashioned stories she had read before. For in this book, the characters flew through the sky and the rabbits talked. Without thinking long, Alicia told her brother that she wished to become a writer, to make books that would make her readers feel as if they were in a fairy tale. The boy supported his sister, saying that his sister's dreams would definitely come true but their mother would not like it, because writers were considered despicable people. Presently, the girl thought that not a single book had ever been sold, but her brother had always supported her, even when she herself had almost given up, which was why it was published under the name Phil. Suddenly, the maid dispelled the girl's thoughts by saying that she had only turned away for a few seconds, and she was already in front of the bookstore, and that her mother would be angry if she saw it. Alicia, with puppy dog eyes, began to ask the maid to stay in the bookstore for just 10 minutes. The maid couldn't resist such sweetness, so she agreed, but still said she wouldn't take responsibility if anyone saw them. Entering the store, the girl immediately found a book, almost all the way out of the shelf, which at any moment could fall off and hurt the customers. She climbed up and corrected the book, but then she slipped on the stairs and began to fall. 
A man picked her up at that very moment, and she still had her arm intact. Alicia began to explain that her dress had gotten caught under her leg, and there was a book sticking out of the top, and she wanted to correct it, so she fell. The man handed her the book, but she was acting very strangely, so he thought that Alicia was trying to hide that she was reading fantasy novels. The man said that for such cases it was better to ask the help of the administrator, and he left, leaving the girl fascinated by him. After this incident, Alicia went to meet Kiri, who was very surprised that her homebody friend was the first to ask to meet, because it was very unusual. The girl thought that Alicia was worried about love problems, even though her parents were going to marry her off to a man whose face she had never even seen. They started talking, and Alicia began to tell her that she would like a perfect man who would not notice her. Then she blushed and said that she had recently seen a very handsome guy in a bookstore, to which her friend thought that she had just fallen in love. Alicia thought that if she had to get married, it would be better to marry a handsome man, because such a face could be the inspiration for her novel. Kiri offers to do it her way, and choose her own groom, so they were obliged to go to the ball. On the way home, Dame began to ask the man if he was worried about anything, but in return, he received a cold stare. The butler didn't believe he was doing well, as the man had been staring at the return of night in the bookstore all day. The man sat there, not understanding why the author of his favourite book was writing so much, and now he was interrupted, thinking that it was probably due to illness. On the other hand, he thought that the author might have injured his arm, or had problems with the bail bonds. Upon reaching home, Dame brought Duke Armand a whole stack of papers, among them a letter, and it said that a new season would soon begin. Fresh green would flood the streets and begin to please the eye. The Assent family hoped that the Duke would be able to befriend their daughter, who was turning 17. The most fertile land on the continent, Saburo. A peaceful land where there had been no wars for decades, and the previous emperor had increased the prosperity of the country, and he had three sons. The first was named Murkan, and he was the emperor's successor. The second was named Leviathan, he received the title and territories, and then went to Tara. The third son married, but the couple died in an accident shortly after Lessa's birth. His upbringing was taken over by the imperial family. The young man was distinguished for his intelligence and immediately fell into the disfavour of the Empress because Crown Prince Abel was weak. Because of the growing anger of the Empress, he had to hide in the library for days and his only friends were Books and Abel, but one day Leviathan, who had no children of his own, adopted a nephew who had lost his parents. So Lessa left the Imperial Palace and moved to Tara. No one expected the boy to live to ten, but Abel grew up, and Lessa, who moved to Tara, also went through the coming-of-age ceremony, received his parents' inheritance, and became a duke. Things went smoothly then, the Empress's jealousy diminished, and the duke was able to exhale. But this peace did not last long. With the Empress's permission, the Empress began to select a bride for Lessa, girls from families without any power. Armand thought he still had some thoughts of marriage, but in such an important matter, it was better for him to choose on his own, all because of the Empress's restrictions trying to drive him out of palace life. The Duke wanted to do everything slowly when the desire arose, but if an heir appeared, he could inherit Tara completely. The Duke inherited the river and the lands along it. This was due to the great success of the hot springs business. It was better that the person he would marry should prove indifferent, if marriage could not be avoided after all. He wished his wife wouldn't worry when he stayed away from books in the library for long periods of time, or better still, that she wouldn't mind him reading novels at all. Armand understood, the one that would not interfere in his affairs, indifferent, independent and independent woman, was hidden like a needle in a haystack. Flipping through the letters, the man noticed the portrait of Alicia, on which she was poorly rendered, because he thought that the girl was brighter and more luxurious at the moment of their meeting in the bookstore. Dame saw that Armand was interested in this girl, so he immediately pulled out invitations to the ball from under his jacket. At this time, preparing for the ball, Alicia thought that with this success, she would definitely marry a random man who would be very far from her ideal. Because of the peculiarities of the empire, working women after marriage were rare, as both spouses worked only in poor families to support themselves. 
non-working girls had to concentrate on socialising to gain information and increase the influence of their husbands. All this led to the fact that writing was strongly frowned upon among women. So Alicia wrote under a pseudonym. All the guests of the ball were greatly surprised by the appearance of the Duke's daughter, because she did not often show her face at such events. After a while, the girl got very drunk, making it difficult for her to even stand on her feet. At this time, most of the ladies of the ball began to discuss the arrival of Duke Armand. Kiri didn't understand how Alicia, who even on pain of death wouldn't want to leave the room, and Lessa, who was not inferior to her, were on the same ball at the same time. Alicia was badly frightened by a blue-eyed cat, which caused the girl to back up and accidentally step on Duke Armand's foot. The girl began to apologise, but the man didn't give any sign that he was in much pain. Lessa asked Alicia if she thought it was too dark to be alone in the middle of the street. The girl awkwardly replied that she was a little stuffy, so she left the ball. Kiri looked everywhere for Armand and Alicia, and as soon as she found them together, she immediately thought that they were very suitable for each other, for they both loved reading books and hated the hustle and bustle. Alicia was very uncomfortable to be around the Duke, but still, she asked him about the purpose for which he had come to this ball, considering that the man did not look like a person who enjoyed such things. The girl told him that what she really needed to do was to get married, but she kept failing to find the right person. The Duke shared the similarity of his situation, to which the girl said that even though she didn't succeed today, she would just be matched anyway. Without thinking long, Lessa asked the girl if she liked the book she had been looking at in the bookstore for so long. The girl got a little embarrassed and hastily said that she didn't have time to read at all and then remembered that Kiri had probably been looking for her for a long time. Alicia said goodbye to the man and wished him luck. The man looked at her with fascination and then noticed a note by his side. After reading it, he smirked heavily. Alicia was quickly able to find Kiri and after a few moments she panicked badly for she had dropped a note that described the man she could marry without a second thought. For her, the ideal man was an above average height man who is very responsible and doesn't talk much. The next morning, Lessa began to reread that very note many times and when he turned it over, he found notes about the plot of his favorite book. This seemed very strange to him for the girl had assured him that she did not read novels. The Duke did not know what to do, so he wanted to talk to Alicia again, and if their ideals were similar, he would offer her to marry him. That morning, the girl's mother woke her up and told her that a marriage proposal had been received, so she should prepare for the wedding as soon as possible. The girl's maid also began to congratulate her, for she thought she would die without seeing the wedding of her mistress. While Alicia was being prepared for marriage, she could not come out of her stupor. The maid began to tell the girl that today she looked much more beautiful than usual, but she felt as if she were a chicken in a net. Before the girl entered the carriage, her mother asked her to remember everything she had taught her and not to dishonour the Weber family. At this time, Dame was joking about Duke Armand, for he had not expected that a man would decide to take someone as his wife so suddenly. After getting into the carriage, the man once again looked at the rounded letters written by Alicia hoping at that moment that he was not mistaken in his choice and everything would go well. The girl reached a park of marvellous beauty where the young Duke was already there. Alicia was very glad that she was chosen by the man she met at the ball. The young one sat down in a gazebo and then the man formally introduced himself as Lesser Black Armand. The family of Duke Armand, who had the right to the throne, was admired by all and therefore Alicia could not understand why such a noble man was attracted to her. The girl asked Lesser directly about his benefit from the marriage, to which he replied that he had simply fallen in love. The man added that this was not a normal marriage proposal, so he asked her family for a private meeting with the girl. Alicia asked the Duke if he was joking, but he responded by pulling out a note to the girl and holding it out to her, which promptly made her tear it up. Armand saw the girl's embarrassment, so he asked for forgiveness, for he had read the contents of that note long ago. The man again proposed marriage to Alicia, saying that he had the same thoughts as her. That's why he said he fell in love, for they were both looking for people similar to themselves. The girl wondered if the Duke could guarantee her freedom after the wedding, and hearing a favourable answer, she demanded a room to which no one would enter, and permission to sleep separately, for she had bad sleeping habits. 
In Alicia's estimation, the man was suitable in appearance, had a good family and listened to her requests. In addition, he was very attentive. For all the girl's demands, Lesser made his own, saying that he would respect her privacy, but she had to maintain her dignity as a duchess. Agreeing to the demands of both parties, the Duke offered to sign a marriage contract if the girl so desired. Even in the case of arranged marriages, the conclusion on paper was very rare, and it happened only if the head of the family was a married girl, or if she was greatly superior to her husband in status. Dame submitted the contracts, and both signed them. Then Lesser suggested that it was better to state his innermost desires before marriage. The man needed a companion and heir to his family. The Chief Justice Marquis Weber and the Duke's father were close friends, so no one could oppose the marriage. Lesser added that they would have the wedding ceremony within a month, and while they were free, they could just go for a walk. During this, the man asked about Alicia's favourite books, to which she confusedly replied that she loved textbooks, since no one was supposed to know that she was a writer. The man felt sorry, for he thought they could have discussed the story of Raiden and Elman together. Alicia couldn't stand it, and began to say that the heroine of the book was not called Elman, but Saint Elizabeth. Only after a couple of minutes did the girl realise that she had screwed up her disguise big time. Two weeks later, the news spread throughout society. The emperor was so pleased with the union of the disinterested duke and the young lady of the Weber family that he even personally wrote a congratulatory letter to the newlyweds. The preparation for the wedding was intense, but everything went smoothly. Alicia's mother did not calm down and made the girl try on many outfits because she wanted a perfect wedding for her daughter. Although it was an arranged marriage, but the girl was really getting married, from which she was very worried. At Alicia's wedding, all of her siblings gathered and were very happy for the girl. The brothers wanted to talk to her, but their mother chased them away, saying that at this rate they could be late for the palace, so they had to leave the premises. Elliot had known Lesser since the academy, but the Duke was not a friendly person at all, fixated on his feelings because he was weak and cold as ice. While wandering around the castle, Alicia's older brother came across Lesser, after which he asked him to take care of his sister. All the guests began to spread rumours that the newlyweds fell in love with each other at first sight, but some thought that the Duke made the first step. The man met Alicia and led her to the garden gazebo, where she couldn't stop thinking how handsome the Duke was. The girl thought that she would not see Lesser until the wedding. The newlyweds talked until the evening, and when the moon appeared in the sky, the girl began to tell the legend of the full moon. The Duke had already read it in one of the episodes of The Return of Night, but still did not want to interrupt the girl. Once upon a time, there lived a maid who loved her master unrequitedly, knowing that they could never be together. She prayed to the moon every day without asking for love, wanting only to make her master happy. The master had a fiancé, but even after they were married, the maid continued to pray to the moon every day. One day, the wife heard the prayer of a maid and punished her for daring to look at her master. The maid fell into a forest lake and drowned, but the moon goddess, who heard her prayer every night, took pity on her and made her her attorney, saying that she now helped people who were unrequitedly in love. Alicia added that even now, in Andar, an indigenous village in the south, the lovers pray before their wedding and bathe in lake water, because they believe that because of that, they will never be separated. The Duke asked the girl if the girl was sure, but she asked him not to worry, saying she would honour their pact. The next day, Alicia looked the most beautiful in the world, although she was beautiful, but in this dress she almost could not breathe, and her mother demanded to tolerate this discomfort until the end of the wedding. The girl gathered her thoughts and went under the wedding wreath, and then came the moment when the priest performed the wedding ceremony, listening to the vows of fidelity of the newlyweds. All the guests were happy to tears, watching the marriage of the young girl and the duke. After the ceremony, all her brothers came to Alicia and began to congratulate the bride. The brothers were very worried about the girl because in their opinion, she could surely do something. Alicia was very hurt by these words and she began to take offense at the boy. At that moment, Kiri joined them, supporting her worried friend with all her strength. Kiri was excited to see what would happen to the dress after the wedding. 
for the girl had never used such a colour before. Alicia's brother took her under his arm and escorted her to the room where she began to prepare for the continuation of the celebration. At that moment she dressed up in the most gorgeous red dress, which emphasised all the beauty of the Duchess. She spent a few hours at the ball and then went to her chambers. There she remembered the room promised by the Duke, behind the door of which a maid named Choo Choo was to wait. Alicia went up to the room and called for the maid, but at the name of Choo Choo appeared a tall lady, who from that day forward served her. Alicia got to know the girl well and asked her to escort her to her room. On the way, the girl constantly turned around and could not keep up with the long steps of her servant. When she entered the room, the Duchess was very surprised because she had hoped for a small room for work. But in front of her, there was a rather spacious office. The maid added that Alicia could furnish the interior to her liking. She had only to tell him and he would prepare everything in the best way. The boy told her about the call, thanks to which he would always come to her, and afterwards went to warm the water for the bath, for the Duchess was preparing for sleep. The next morning, Alicia didn't catch her husband in the house, as he had long since left on urgent business. After making sure that no one would disturb her, the girl was going to continue writing her fantasy novel, and then decided to send a letter to the curator. Alicia wanted to go herself, but she was not sure if she would be allowed to go alone. On the other hand, she did not think that the Duke would surround her with guards from all sides, because it could complicate everything. The girl thought that it couldn't be like that, and it was just her fantasy, because her husband couldn't do that to her. But as it turned out, Lesser did have people assigned to the Duchess, saying that she could do anything but with an escort. Seeing the publishing house employee, Alicia thought it was a chance to get rid of the guards, so she suggested the girl to have a glass of tea in a quiet place. The girls went into the nearest quiet establishment, where an employee of the publishing house asked the Duchess if she had any good news, to which the latter replied that Alicia would soon be able to continue writing, and she would soon receive a letter about the next meeting. The girl was overjoyed, for people were greatly looking forward to the return of her book. Alicia said that she was unlikely to write a novel quickly, because she needed to find inspiration, although the book was already approaching the end, but she still could not gain momentum. In response, the employee suggested that the Duchess release a short story for the time when the girl would rest. At this time, Lesser was reported that the publisher could not say who the author of Return of the Moon was. They merely relayed that the writer had to interrupt the release for personal reasons. The Duke decided to help the author, saying that if he didn't have enough money they would sponsor him. If he was sick they would cure him. With these words, Lesser personally went to the publishing house to deal with the matter. The next morning, the girl was startled by Choo Choo, who stood waiting for her to wake up. Alicia took a bath and went to the Duke to say hello. The man said that it was not necessary to come for such a thing, but the girl did not want to listen to him and called the Duke for a joint breakfast. Lesser began to recall a trip to a publishing house where he had suggested that the head sponsor a certain person, namely the author of The Return of Night, for the Duke had heard that he had taken a break for personal reasons. The Duke asked him to betray his offer to the author, to which the chapter immaculately agreed. On the way to the dining room, Alicia kept tripping over her dress, which could not help but notice the Duke, after which he extended his hand to her and helped her get to the table in one piece. The girl praised the Duke's caring, as she had thought even in their second meeting that he was a terrible man. Lessa was surprised that the Duchess thought he was a handsome but ugly man, saying that was not the case at all. After having breakfast, the newlyweds began to spend the whole morning together, walking in the park. After a beautiful morning, the Duke went to the reception of the Prince. Yesterday, he heard that Lessa, who had just performed the wedding ceremony, was already completely absorbed in his work. The prince began to ask about the gift he had given for the wedding, and then ordered the duke to follow him and help him choose a gift for the princess. The man said that his wife, Chiron, couldn't seem to live without drugs because hallucinogens were spreading everywhere and there was an underground trade between the aristocrats. Since they had too little information, they couldn't act too rashly. In one of the houses of the city, Every night a party was raging, in which aristocrats' drugs were involved. 
It was like a madness in which ordinary people could not make out a single fragment, and it was led by a very powerful man. One of Lesser's spies reported that, at the Duke's request, he had observed recent trends in the north, where hallucinogens were said to be peddled in nooks, pubs and gambling establishments. Among the symptoms of the drug were hallucinations, visions and severe addiction. At the moment, the spy was not able to block the distribution channels of the substance because one of the smuggling routes was classified. But the problem was that there was indeed a large shipment of high-quality goods and there could be several other delivery routes. When he returned home, the Duke went in search of his wife, who had been out in the garden until nightfall. The man took off his jacket and threw it over the girl so that she would not catch cold under the cold moon. The girl told him that she was walking through the courtyard at night because Dame had told her about the magnificent night views of the duchy. Lesser was worried about the girl, for it was late and the wind was cold, so they should go back. Alicia agreed with the man, asking him not to work too hard. After the walk, the girl sat on the bed and still could not believe that she was the Duke's wife. The next day, a girl came from the publishing house bringing documents about the financial support of the author of the book, The Return of Night, as a donation. The employee said that not so long ago, an aristocrat had personally come to the publishing house with this proposal. According to her, the man at first expressed his desire to support aspiring writers who are in a difficult life situation, but they had a separate conversation about Alicia, because he believed that stopping the release of the book was connected with any problems. The Duchess was very grateful, and so she decided to find out the name of the sponsor, but there was none, as he wished to remain anonymous. The girl was very pleased with the sponsor's willingness to help her, but she could not accept the money, for the only price the reader had to pay was the price of the book itself. The publishing house employee said that she would pass the girl's words to the director to take care of everything. Alicia kept on asking who her sponsor was, but the woman didn't know it herself, because the only information about him was that he was an aristocrat of the highest rank. Lesser paced the room and recalled moments of past walks with Alicia, finally believing that the girl should not have hidden her infatuation, and when the return of night was over, he wished to discuss it with her. At this time the girl was riding in a carriage and thought that she should write an appeal to the readers not to impose on her as a sponsor. In the morning, the maid handed the Duke the gift, and he immediately thought about Alicia's words, that if he was bored, he could always come to her. A few days ago, in the jewellery store Zack, the prince together with Lesser chose gifts for wives. This store was very popular among the girls. The prince assured Lesser that the jewellery would be the best gift for the Duchess, and she would definitely like it. Then he chose a necklace with green gemstones. This piece was made of fianite, and the jewellery was handmade by a master craftsman, so it took a lot of time. Presently, the Duke stood in a stupor, not understanding on what pretext to give the girl this jewellery. The man asked Dame what his wife was doing, to which he received the answer that Lesser had better go and find out for herself. The Duke said he was too busy, but the butler didn't realise it until he looked at him with a cold stare. Lesser could not stand the wait and went to his wife to give her a gift. The girl was surprised that her husband gave her gifts so often, not knowing that the last surprise was prepared by the prince. Alicia thanked the man, and after that he went about his business, as she did not have time to stop him. The Duchess was worried about Lesser because when the man left, he looked very sad. Meanwhile, she was afraid to open the present because she didn't know what was in it. The box contained a very open dress. The girl wanted to say that she didn't like that, but she couldn't. Alicia didn't expect that the Duke had such a peculiar taste in women's clothes. The girl could not leave it like that, so she went looking for her husband all over the mansion, but he was nowhere to be found, and so she found him at the moment of conversation that Lesser was not going to yield to his excellency's tastes. Dame assured the man that sometimes you still had to consider the opinions of others. Alicia thought that the butler was aware that her husband had given her a dress that was too revealing. Such thoughts made the girl furious, thinking that she was the only one who had not guessed anything and that Lesser could only dream of such a thing. At dinner, the Duchess looked very agitated, so the man started telling the girl that if she was in pain, she should have called a doctor. Lesser asked if the girl liked the food, 
but she jumped up and shouted that she liked closed clothes up to her neck. These words made the Duke very uncomfortable. Alicia began to remember the Duke's words that everything would be wonderful after the wedding, but in fact, they were just beautiful words. The girl became embarrassed and asked how Lesser acted when his very desire was not satisfied. The man glowered, saying that everyone has desires. He didn't know which one bothered the girl, but everyone has their own preferences. Lesser did not understand what he had to do, because there was no way he could explain to his wife so that she would not be offended or upset. Alicia understood the man perfectly well, but it was not that he had bad preferences. The girl realised that there was nothing to be done, and that she had to say it right up front, that her husband's preferences were not suitable for her. She thought that it was impossible to delay, and it was necessary to declare her intentions. But Lessa did not understand what she was saying. Alicia couldn't take it anymore, and said that the lingerie the man had given her was too obscene. She liked something big and plain, and she looked terrible in it. She added that she didn't like the toys, saying that every time she put the underwear on, she took it right off. Lessa stood up and asked the girl what she meant, for he didn't know what she was talking about. The newlyweds went to Alicia's room, where the girl showed an open bottom. Plus, she had a whole box of toys as well. Lessa opened it, and there were a lot of things in it. To talk about which aloud was simply unacceptable. The Duke stood in a stupor, hearing from his wife that when she said she didn't like it, she meant something else, and such things were not at all to her taste. The man now wondered more than anything who had thought of sending these things to the Duchess. The Duke remembered the smug look on the Prince's face as they talked about his wedding present. The girl had asked Lesser not to worry too much. After all, they were spouses, and she had promised to keep it all a secret. The man laughed hard at his wife's reaction. Lesser asked the Duchess why she was so concerned that her husband might have such strange tastes, but she kept repeating that she wouldn't say anything to anyone. The man cheered once more, and then explained that there had been a misunderstanding, and all those gifts had come from the prince. Alicia was embarrassed to learn the secret preferences of the future heir of the empire, which she could not even tell anyone about. The cheerful lesser decided to ask his wife if she liked the prince's gifts, so she left them, to which she replied that the man would not live till morning. Lesser asked the girl to trust him, because there was no way he would bully those weaker than him, even as gifts, adding that he had never even dated a girl before, so he didn't know about such toys. After that, he still decided to admit to his wife that he had a slightly different preference, and really liked tenderness. The Duke said that Alicia was his first girlfriend, so he thought that there could be nothing sweeter than tenderness. The girl blushed, not understanding why her husband was repeating with such an expression that she was his first. Alicia was surprised that Lesser stood there and said all this without being embarrassed. The fireworks went off outside the window, and then the Duke remembered the festival that was coming up. The festival would be held during the week after the roses bloomed. On this day, men in love would pick the most gorgeous of roses and give them to their sweethearts, and then they would dance together all night, at which time it was rare for curfews to be observed. Lessa asked the girl if she liked festivals, but she didn't know that, for she had spent days and nights writing before, so she rarely left the house. Alicia liked festivals, but she had never been to one that was dedicated to couples in love, and to be honest, she hadn't been to any regular festivals either. Lessa said that he had been to festivals once before about ten years ago, but mostly he spent his time at home or reading books. The newlyweds went out on the balcony and began to enjoy the views of the most picturesque fireworks display. The Duke leaned over and suggested Alicia to go to the festival right now. The girl was glad and ran to her room to get ready and change her clothes and then go down to the entrance of the mansion. Lesser remembered the box and said he would take it away and throw it away. But the girl stopped him, for if they were so thoughtless as to throw away the gift, they might get into trouble with the prince. The Duke was embarrassed, and as he walked away, thought he was ashamed that he had not been so open in a new way. Alicia got ready, and she and Lesser travelled in a carriage to the festival. It was the girl's first time going out, so she was very nervous. Choo Choo asked the Duchess not to go far away from her, because they did not know what danger could lurk outside the carriage. There were many people at the festival, just walking around and enjoying the sights of the fireworks. 
The Duke asked his wife not to go far away from him, for it could be dangerous here. A whole crowd gathered here because of the festival, and every merchant decorated their shop. Walking around the square, the girl took a fancy to one of the merchant's jewellery. Alicia didn't expect the price to be low, so she decided to buy earrings to go with the necklace. The Duke stood there and couldn't even say that the jewellery was beautiful. It looked like he was thinking about something of his own. Alicia began to boast that she was great at haggling, as she was able to buy as many as two pieces of jewellery, and one of them was half price. The Duke coldly offered to help put the jewellery on his wife, but she called Chucha over and gave it to her. Dame became a little jealous that Chuchu had gotten her gift, and he hadn't. Lesser saw the demanding look in his butler's eyes, but thought the man couldn't have expected something like that from him. Alicia took her husband under her arm and pulled him towards the centre of the square where all the people had gathered. The girl thanked Lesser for taking care of her and for accompanying her, to which he kissed her hand and said that it was nothing special. The newlyweds saw the couple kissing and felt awkward as they remembered that this festival was in honour of lovers. Alicia wanted to do something, but she was interrupted by the sudden appearance of Earl Mayle. The man apologised for disturbing them at such a late hour and then introduced himself, saying that it was a great honour for him to meet the girl. The Count invited the newlyweds to drink with him the wonderful wine he had just purchased. Lesser apologised, because today he and his wife had decided to spend time together and he did not want to disturb the wonderful atmosphere, so he proposed to postpone the tasting to another time. The Duke realised that the Count didn't like that he wasn't interested in this, thinking of personal gain, perhaps wanting to secure the right to trade, or just to get something from him. The Count was always like that, so the man had to find out what the man was up to. Lesser apologised for the Count, hoping he hadn't made his wife uncomfortable. Alicia asked her husband not to apologise for it, since they were still having fun together. Dame remarked that it had been a long time since they had had so much fun at this festival, when suddenly the Duke said that the festival was coming to an end and they should head back. Back in Armand's domain, Lesser sat in the bathtub thinking about how tired he was, and yet today was the first time he was able to see Alicia so happy. Today had exhausted the man, but the way the girl kept repeating his name made him feel a bunch of new emotions. The man thought his wife was very amazing because he couldn't even imagine what she might make up tomorrow. The next morning, Dame came to Lesser's study, but the Duke was nowhere to be found. Then the butler thought the man was asleep in his room, since the walk with Alicia might have exhausted him. Lesser was already in front of the entrance to the girl's room when he suddenly met Chucha and told her to tell him that she was the one who had carried his wife to her room last night. The previous night, the girl had fallen asleep in the carriage, so the man had to carry her to bed. Having put Alicia on the bed, the man was greatly surprised that she slept like a frog. In the morning, Chu Chu thought that the Duke cared for the girl, but did not want to embarrass anyone, and now it really felt like they were married. The maid told Alicia that she had carried her to her room when she fell asleep in the carriage, which made the girl blush a lot. After that, Chu Chu handed over a gift from Lily which contained a book and a note that said that now many noble ladies were reading the book given to her and she could help the girl. Alicia thought she should have started reading right away, since Lily knew her preferences best. The book started with the knight being so close to the Marquise that she could feel his breath, sounds from passion filled the room and the like. The girl immediately closed the book, finding it embarrassing. The Duchess didn't understand how an obscene book could help her. After all, she had only recently started to lead a family life. The girl decided that the book should be hidden somewhere far away, otherwise she was not going to live. Fortunately, the cover did not reflect the vicious content of the work. At that moment, Chu Chu came over and announced that fresh strawberries had been brought in today, so she was bringing them to the Duchess. And in addition, Lesser asked her to hand over some documents. Alicia thought that her husband had said that it was unnecessary to take part in the affairs, but she could not stay away since she was the Duke's wife. Lesser and Dame have entrusted some of the important things to Chooch. Over the course of a whole year, the duchy spends sums of money for various needs, and with the changing seasons, there are obligatory things that need to be paid attention to. For example, the garden was being prepared, and the waterways were being checked because of the rainy seasons. 
A lot of attention was also paid to the food in the kitchen, so that there were no spoiled or near-spoiled foods among them. Chuchu Choo noticed that Alicia loved books, so she asked her to share with her what she was currently reading. The girl tried to avoid answering, saying that later she would definitely recommend her some book more interesting than this one. Alicia thought her maid was cool, so she firmly decided that in her next novel, she would definitely create a character in the image of Choo Choo. The girl went to her office, wrapped the book in a package, and wanted to put it in the box, which for some reason contained only obscenities. The Duke was behind Alicia, and she was frightened, for she had not even noticed how Lesser had entered. The girl excused herself by saying that she was just going through her books and moving some personal things into the room, and while she was doing that, she had forgotten about the open door. Lesser told him that he was to travel to the Imperial Palace for a dinner party next month, and he hoped that Alicia would join him, for the dinner would be in two weeks. The Duchess thanked the man, and said she would start preparing the outfit soon. Lesser stood and thought that Alicia had managed to fill all the shelves of the study. Looking at them, he realised that he had never even heard of such books. It was good that the Duke had made sure that the bookcases were spacious after all. The man asked if that box was now a jewellery chest for the Duchess. The girl was confused and began to assure that it was not so, and she just put all her gifts there, and after that sent the Duke to the dining room saying that most likely he was hungry. From that day on, Alicia always kept the doors closed. Alicia wanted to start writing Night Returns again, but she had no idea what to write, so she decided to postpone it for the time being. Following the advice of the publisher's employee, she was going to write something simple and easy, as long as she had time for it. The Uncommon Witch, Alicia's new rebirth book, which will be different from her previous novel. The Duchess was already thinking about some light novel, so she had an outline. The novel would be short and easy to read, but some things still needed to be finalised. If Alicia wanted to make it short, she should have reduced the number of secondary characters. The girl sat on the idea all day and all night, but never came up with anything. And the next day, she was surprised that the day had passed so unnoticed. The Duchess was already getting used to such a life, because in recent days she began to eat breakfast on a schedule, so she woke up at a certain time. When she left the dining room, she asked her husband for a book to inspire her, and he recommended a book about the relationship between two friends, for she liked such books. Alicia was embarrassed, and asked Lesser to forget the notes she had dropped on the day of the ball. The newlyweds reached the Duke's study, and there he gave the girl a book. She immediately realised that despite the fact that the title of the book was not visible, Lesser was able to find it without hesitation, which meant that he treasured this work. In addition to this book, the man found several other works, from which a heavy weight hung on the girl's hands. As she walked out the door, Alicia thought that she was really happy, because she had a husband who was fond of books and could recommend something. After sitting for five hours writing her novel, the Duchess decided to take a break. She thought it was strange that she hardly heard the servants walking around the house, so she assumed it was dawn. Alicia had quite a few notes piled up, just lying in a pile and unsorted. As expected, the first drafts of the novel were written chaotically, in the flow of thoughts of the Duchess, but in general everything came out very well. But this approach wasted a lot of paper due to constant corrections, and about halfway through the narrative, the girl generally stalled. In addition, when she thought of the plot, she could barely contain herself because of the rush of emotions. It was a rough draft, but it was still worth organising, because Alicia thought that the sheets scattered around the office could hold the most beautiful treasure of all. It was wonderful that the Duchess's thoughts were so easily turned into text, but the final material would still be vastly different. And so a new world was born, a new story, and then a book. One time, the books, which were printed in limited editions with the Duchess's initials, were sold out so quickly that she did not even have time to buy a copy for herself. It was time-consuming to publish such a book, because a limited edition always takes longer to make because of the design, so it costs more. With the proceeds, Alicia could help many children. Among such books was The Return of Night, all copies of which were quickly sold out. The Duchess began to think that she should go to breakfast with Lesser soon, and then she could go to sleep. Perhaps they should have had separate breakfasts, 
for Alicia was constantly embarrassed that the Duke had to eat with her. Before the girl went to breakfast, she decided to read the books her husband had recommended to her. The leather cover, in good condition, said it had only been read a couple of times, but no cover guaranteed good condition pages. Lesser handled things with care, and it evoked the most pleasant feelings in Alicia, such as peacefulness. Opening the book, the girl felt the familiar writing style. At first she thought it was a dream, because this book was released in a limited edition. She could not explain that she was holding in her hands her own work, which she had not been able to buy. The preface was definitely hers, for the Duchess had practiced using popular books as a basis, and she was so ashamed of the first volume that she never sat down to write it again. The other book was from a limited edition with a metal plate that hadn't even gone into circulation yet, and the number one inch on the number indicated that it was the very first book of the issue. All of this amazed Alicia, and she couldn't understand where her husband had gotten these books. Taking the third book, which began with the phrase, thank you for coming to see me, the girl was a little embarrassed because she was still ashamed of this phrase. Besides, this manuscript should not be released because it was no longer relevant. Alicia did not understand who her husband was and why he had everything she had written, besides why he advised her to read it all, besides Lesser kept asking her about The Return of Night. The Duke wasn't just a fan of the novel, he liked the author of the work specifically. At breakfast, the Duchess behaved quite unusually, and Lesser could not help but notice it, so he began to bombard the girl with various questions. The girl ate the lemon without looking, and said that the meat was delicious today. After breakfast, Alicia started stalking the man, so he said he was going to go to his office, and if his wife needed anything, she should have spoken up right away. The Duchess frantically wanted to ask how Lesser had gotten his hands on the limited edition ebook and why he liked her novels. The girl couldn't ask that, so she said that she was just delighted that her husband worked even on weekend holidays. The Duke said that everything was fine and the girl could say what she wanted, because from her, he was ready to listen to absolutely everything, so the girl could not be shy and tell. It was the first time Lesser had seen his wife so worried, so he thought she had messed up one of the books. But still, it was a small problem, and it would be better if she admitted it herself. Alicia asked the Duke to shake his hand, but he didn't even know how to respond. And when the girl smiled and offered a hug, Lesser began to think that she was seriously ill. Alicia forgot that the man did not suspect that she was the author of the novel, and she was not allowed to admit it, so she did not know what to do. Lesser put his hand on the girl's head and began to ask her about her health, but she replied that she was fine. Alicia was hurt that she couldn't reveal her identity to the man, and she had no way to thank him. The Duchess wished she could give the man an autograph, but they still didn't know each other much yet. Alicia had been writing for a long time, but she had never met her avid reader. It was the first time something like this had ever happened to her, and she hadn't even thought about it. But as it turned out, she meant a lot to someone. Even if no one else in the world recognised her work, Alicia right now didn't care at all. The girl told the Duke that she had no particular reason. She just felt like it because of her good mood. Lesser realised, from the look on the girl's face, she really had something good going on. They both held hands, the girl thinking of her husband's big and warm hand. Lesser didn't understand what was going on in Alicia's sweet head, but still he offered a hug. At this time, Dame was walking down the hallway, cursing the laundry Chucha had arranged on his day off, when suddenly he saw the newlywed standing in the middle of the day, just hugging. The butler was shocked by this turn of fate, but before he knew it, Chuchu had dragged him around the corner and began to lecture him on tactlessness. The butler was shocked by this turn of fate, but before he knew it, Chuchu had dragged him around the corner and was lecturing him about indiscretion. Chuchu herself was surprised, but the butler was quite inconsiderate. After all, Lesser was married, so such a thing should have been the order of the day now. After that, the servants went to finalise the preparations for the rainy season. The newlyweds stopped hugging, and the girl began to apologise for distracting the Duke from his work. The girl took out a handkerchief and said that she had found it among her things today, so the Duke should accept it as a gift. Lesser thanked the girl, thinking that he did not understand at all what was happening now and what was in Alicia's mind.
In the Duke's office, Dame reported to the man that the information about illegal drugs in the capital had been confirmed. According to their data, the shipment was small, but they found out that the Earl of Mile was involved, and they also found something in one of the reservoirs. At the bottom of the lake lay the body of a young boy, and it bore the marks of torture. He had been discovered this afternoon at dawn. There were no witnesses, as there were few people there this early, and so Dime had dealt with the matter quickly. Lesser couldn't believe what had happened. After all, he had just recently increased the security of the duchy. Accidents were perfectly acceptable, but now we were talking about killing a child. The Duke had ordered the perimeter security to be beefed up first, and his letter delivered today. It was quite possible that this had something to do with the gang, and the situation would be cleared up after the investigators finished their work. But still, it would be very difficult, because there was almost no evidence, and the situation was not in favour of the Duke. Lesser ordered that after the investigation was over, the funeral ceremony should be held properly. The man might need the council's help this time, so they needed to be vigilant. Alicia was walking under the Duke's window, hearing that Lady Andre was due to arrive as early as tomorrow morning, and that the Duchess's request had already been relayed. Chu Chu had asked the girl to tell her if she felt any discomfort. The Duke got up and went to the window, thinking that Alicia had not lied about being in a good mood. But still he did not understand why the girl had given him the handkerchief. Dame saw the man looking at the handkerchief and asked what it was, but the man didn't want to answer. Dame asked permission to ask something while he was here, but the man bickered and demanded that the butler just leave. The young man didn't back down and asked why he liked Alicia, whether it was because of her beauty or just because of it. And after saying that, Dame flew out the door so he wouldn't ask any more questions. Many dresses and jewellery were brought into the girl's room. Madame André introduced herself, while Alicia couldn't understand why they brought her a whole store of jewellery and clothes. On the other hand, noble ladies often bought expensive outfits and only wore them a couple times. One of the girls was very excited to meet the Duchess, saying that they would try to find a design that would be to her liking. In fact, she thought that the more outfits the girl ordered, the more their store would be talked about. All this went on until late at night, after which the shopkeeper promised to complete everything by the promised deadline and left the Armand estate. Alicia was very glad that they were finally finished, and in honour of that, she asked Chucha to bring her a glass of juice. Alicia had only looked at a couple of designs, and yes, talked a little, but even that exhausted her a lot. She wished every day could be as peaceful as this one. At that moment, she remembered that she still had to deal with the books she had borrowed from her husband, and then she could go to bed. She also had to assess the donations and her fee, and she had to sort out the assets and investments that were in the bank. She needed to get things in order for the wedding to go smoothly, and she was too late. Alicia was going to go to the bank the next day, and since she was leaving the house, she should stop by the orphanage, for she had not been there in a long time. The next morning, the girl explained to Lessa what she was going to do, and the latter in turn wanted to send more chaperones than usual. The girl decided to find out what had happened, and after she heard about the murder of the boy, she was immediately horrified. The Duke said that of course he had strengthened the guards, but it was worth being careful, because the investigation was still going on, so it was worth taking precautions. Alicia assured her husband that she would not stay late, and she hoped that the criminal would be caught soon. After breakfast, the girl sat in the carriage and began to think that it was hard to write a novel before dawn, and then to solve personal affairs in the morning. Still, she was travelling with Choo Choo and an escort today, so she had peace of mind. Alicia was welcomed with open arms by her long-time maid Lily. The girl missed Alicia a lot and was happy to see her. Choo Choo saw all this, and didn't understand why Lily was allowing herself to hug her mistress. Lily apologised, for for a moment she had forgotten that the girl was now a duchess, she reminded herself constantly. But like the last stretch, she had forgotten and spoiled everything. Alicia did not care about that, for she was more interested in the thing the maid was to bring. One of the guards volunteered to escort the duchess on her way to the bank, and she agreed, but on the condition that he would only escort her to the reception area. Lily asked Chucha if she was serving her lady, but afterwards corrected herself, for she was now Mistress Alicia to her. Chuchu smiled and confirmed that she worked for her Mistress Alicia. 
these words made her very uncomfortable, in addition to not liking the fact that the simple maid was so tall and very beautiful, for she almost mistook her for a butler. Lily asked the maid about whether Choo Choo knew that the Duchess was a very good person, but the maid knew it well, and so she showed the jewellery given to her at the festival. This all made Lily feel even worse, and she became very jealous of Alicia's current maid. At this time, the Duchess returned from the bank and thanked Lily for her help with the subject. The former maid asked not to be thanked, saying that the girl could ask her whenever and for whatever she wanted. Alicia was going to head to the orphanage as soon as possible, for they needed to be back before sunset. Lily was glad that the Duchess had such a wonderful assistant, but for some reason, deep down, she was very sad. Arriving at the orphanage, Alicia asked the knights to stay outside because they could scare the children. The girl promised that she would be fine because Choo Choo was always by her side. Inside the orphanage, Alicia was met by a nun. She told her that thanks to the Duchess's donations, they were doing great and had enough of everything. The girl had sponsored this orphanage for the sake of maintaining her family's authority, but that wasn't the only reason she came here. At that moment, a girl named Fatima ran out and started hugging Alicia. The girl began to ask her why she was covered in abrasions, thinking that she had been running wildly. Fatima justified herself by saying that she had missed the Duchess for a long time. That's why she was running fast. Alicia asked Chucha to bring some jar from her travel bag. There were a lot of sweet candies in it, and the girl asked to share them with all the girl's friends, although Alicia gave them to her. But still, it was impossible to be greedy. The girl thanked Chucha, who made these candies with her own hands, and then ran to the other children. The Duchess looked at Fatima and then asked the nun if there had been any news about the girl's custody. The woman said that few people wanted a girl with a scar on her face, and Fatima was the main helper at the orphanage, so she looked after the younger ones. The nun promised that even if there were no good people to take the girl, she would take care of her here. Alicia pulled out the box of money she had just taken from the bank, wanting to give it to the orphanage. The woman was getting a little worried, for the Marquis Weber had already donated a lot this spring. The Duchess reassured the woman, saying that her husband also wanted to help the children, so they decided together to give the money to the orphanage. The nun accepted the gift and promised that she would pray to the Almighty for the girl and the Duke. Alicia saw that Fatima came out without Alex, so she thought he was adopted. It seemed to the girl that the girl would be very sad without him, but everything seemed to be fine. Alex took care of Fatima as if she was his own sister, always helping and looking after her. The nun sadly informed her that Alex was not actually adopted. The woman tearfully asked to come inside the orphanage, where she would tell her what had happened to Alex. On the way to the office, Alicia worried a lot, going barely containing her emotions. A noble family had adopted the boy, and their estate was 200 miles from the orphanage. But recently, the boy's body had been found in the waterways near the borders of the capital. The nun did not tell Fatima this, for she knew that the girl would be depressed by what she heard. The woman was very sorry that Alicia had stopped by for the first time in a long time and had to hear such terrible news. The Duchess asked the nun not to apologise, for the girl hoped that Alex had gone to a better place. Heading home in the carriage, Alicia couldn't stop thinking that what Lesser had told her this morning had happened to Alex. She couldn't understand how it could happen to such a bright and cheerful child, who always smiled and tried to help those in need. At dinner, Alicia asked Lesser to tell her something about the murder he had talked about this morning. The girl said that today she had been to the orphanage that her family was sponsoring, and there she had been told that the boy who had been killed was one of the orphanage residents who had recently been adopted. The question shocked Duke, and the girl went on to say that noble families were taking children from orphanages more and more lately, and her orphanage had already taken several, and she was worried that the children might have howled in danger. According to Alicia, the funding at the orphanage wasn't the best, so it was hard for them to keep track of the children they gave to families. Because of all this, the Duchess wanted to ask Lesser to help her with this matter. For the moment, she wanted to get the addresses of those who had been adopted, to see if they needed any help. The man promised that he would help take care of the matter soon. Alicia began to think that the adoption process should have been stricter to prevent more cases like this from happening. 
She had heard that in other countries, the process was much stricter, and that there were many interviews before a child was given to a guardian. Lesser had not expected to discuss such matters with his wife, and had no idea that he would need it in his work. Already in the office, the Duke was informed that Alicia was probably close to the children from the orphanage and was deeply affected by the incident. Today, the man recognised his wife from a different perspective. Alicia sat in her room and thought that if she excluded the expenses for the donation, her assets in the bank had increased a lot, in which case she could buy more books for the children and give all the profits to the orphanage. Alicia was almost able to get a donation from the publisher, and besides, Sarah said she didn't have to worry about it, because people tended to do good deeds. In a cheerful mood, the girl decided to write a small letter, and tomorrow asked Chucha to send it to Sarah. The next day, Dame reported to the Duke that the publishing house had turned down his offer, saying they didn't need a sponsor right now in addition to handing over documents that included investment reports and a letter that the author of Lesser's favourite novel had written. The letter said that the author was grateful for the man's support and for reading and appreciating the Return of Night series. Lesser was sure the letter had been written by Phil, for the Duke could feel every word, even though it was just ink on paper. Even though the author didn't know who the sponsor was, it seemed to the man that Phil was still uncomfortable. Even though the money was not accepted at the publishing house, Lesser was still glad. The man decided not to continue sponsoring the publishing house because the author was refusing and he couldn't be any more inconvenienced. During the walk, Chuchu asked Alicia to let her know in advance when she was going to visit the orphanage because the maid wanted to cook something else for the children. Chuchu assured her that she would be happy to do it and make the best food for the children because she liked how all the children praised her. Alicia sat with a sad face and thought that if she hadn't gone to the orphanage yesterday, she wouldn't have heard the sad news about Alex. Nevertheless, she was glad that the boy's funeral was held with all the honours, all thanks to Lesser, who was able to organise it in no time. But still, it remained unclear why Alex had some kind of drug in his hands. Sorting through the documents, Lesser realised that, roughly speaking, the child had been bought for a minimal amount of money to then abuse him and force him to work. It was all too cruel. The Duke couldn't give the details to Alicia because it would have shocked her. The aristocrat who had adopted Alex had been imprisoned but had cut off his tongue during the proceedings so they couldn't get the information they needed. This case wasn't so simple because murder wasn't all they were trying to hide so the case should have been investigated more thoroughly. A couple days later, Lesser was on his way to his wife's room and saw her dancing merrily with her maid Chuchu. Alicia explained that she was practising the dance because she had never danced in a couple. The maid understood the situation and decided to leave, saying that she had completely forgotten that she had some work to finish urgently. Alicia excitedly let the girl go because she didn't want Chuchu to work late because of her. Chuchu approached the Duke and said that she just wanted to suggest to him that he practiced dancing with Alicia. Lesser didn't want to dance, but he couldn't take his eyes off his wife's eyes when he saw that she desired it. The Duke held out his hand, and before they began, the girl warned that she might accidentally step on his foot. Alicia said that they shouldn't have danced so close because she might have stumbled or something worse, but the man didn't care. Lesser suggested moving to the first floor because it was more convenient to dance there. But the girl was too shy of the servants, so she refused. The girl wondered where Lesser had learned to dance like that, for he did not attend soirees. The answer that the man had just learned to dance with Alicia greatly embarrassed the girl, and afterwards they practised for a long time until the sun went down. On the day of the visit to the Imperial Palace, Alicia dressed up in the most luxurious dress that the Duke had given her the other day. In the carriage, the girl was very nervous and began to ask her husband if he had been to such events. Lesser was not comfortable with such things, but still he had been to a few such places. The banquet was to begin in the evening, but in the meantime, Lesser suggested a little rest in the room reserved for them. The newlyweds were just about to drink tea on the terrace, when suddenly Dame came in and delivered something important to the Duke's ear, after which he was forced to leave urgently. Alicia was sorry, for she had thought that they would be able to practice dancing some more. 
The girl sat down and began to think that Lessa had told her that tomorrow morning the men would go hunting and the girls would watch a play and have a tea party and in the evening there would be a banquet in the common room. His thoughts were interrupted by the crown prince, who had come without any notice. The young man from the threshold began to say that he was looking forward to getting to know the duke's wife. The girl wanted to remonstrate with the prince for all his gifts, but she didn't. Lessa came back and said that the prince had come at the most unfortunate moment, but he replied that he had just stopped by to say hello, so he offered to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart chat. The prince immediately said that he was just a douche compared to some in the room, meaning the duke. The young man said that the Marquis Weber had once told him about his only and favourite daughter, so the prince was very glad that they had met in person. Afterwards, he asked if Alicia liked his wedding present, from which she thanked him politely. The prince decided to ask the couple if they liked their quarters. Although they were far from the banquet hall, it was the largest and most luxurious room of all. He hoped they were happy here, because it had the best soundproofing and the strongest guards. After such a speech, Alicia thought that despite the prince's status, he still cared about the comfort of other people. Besides, it could be that he was not such a pervert as the girl thought about it. Suddenly, the prince decided to ask an unexpected question. He often rested in this room. Thanks to this, he even had a son. So the prince expected that Lesser would soon please him with similar news. The duchess was embarrassed by such words and she fell into a stupor for a long time, thinking over the young man's words. The prince briefly left the couple, saying that they would meet at the banquet. The newlyweds, left alone, were very uncomfortable about what had happened. The girl told Lessa that she should change her shoes because they were very heavy for walking. Stepping back from her conversation with the prince, Alice went to the banquet together with the duke. The girl remembered that the hall here was supposed to be incredibly luxurious and she wanted to look at it very much, but she was still a little nervous. The Duchess thought that they should have worked more on the dance because it was their first time out together as a couple and they had to show their best side. There was a nice atmosphere at the reception because many people warmly welcomed the girl. The Prince announced the beginning, saying that the guests could drink, eat and have fun. At this time, the head of the illegal gatherings was sitting with a girl and relaxing. He could have gone dancing with everyone, but he didn't care about the fun. After dancing, Alicia looked very tired. Besides, today was a very long day and tomorrow was to be exactly the same. Suddenly, the girl remembered that there was only one bed in their room, which meant that they could sleep together. The Duke asked his wife not to worry, for there were two bedrooms in this room. Alicia breathed a sigh of relief. The Emperor's words during the day had made her nervous, but now everything was fine. The next morning the men went hunting and the women watched the play and went to a tea party. At this tea party, the Duchess managed to get acquainted with Count Dimitri's wife. The girl thought that the Countess was so friendly with her because they were the same age. She was very nice and unlike other aristocrats, she didn't try to teach Alicia anything. The girls who dominated the capital society were gathered at this table, so the Duchess didn't understand why they needed to get close to her. There was no princess or empress with them today, but there were always the cunning vixens of high society, eager to take their place. Count Hermann's wife began to tell Alicia that Duke Armand cared surprisingly much for the girl, though in her opinion, it was not surprising. The girl asked the Duchess to come more often to their meetings because she would always be happy to help her. Alicia was so worried, but the Countess came with good intentions, so she began to think that in the eyes of others she seemed to be a green newcomer in the world of married ladies. In any case, the Duchess had to make sure that socialising with others benefited her. On the third day, there was a charity fair organised by the nobles. Alicia was happy that they managed to raise a lot of money that went to a good cause. Two days later, the girl began to think that she should have published a new work, but she could not bring herself even to take a pen in her hands. Today, Alicia was able to write, for it seemed to her that inspiration had visited her. She picked up Return of the Night, thinking that maybe she could write a sequel. In the evening, the Duchess couldn't understand why she couldn't write. She had already thought of the end of the new book in her head, but now nothing was working and she couldn't finish the ending. 
Alicia wanted to publish the last volume of Return of Night as soon as possible, so she could see Lesser reading it. Chu Chu knocked on the room, saying that the Duke had already arrived. The girl didn't hesitate for a second and ran to meet her husband. Lesser had finally returned, and now they could spend time together, see each other at dinner, and say, Good morning. The Duke put his hand to Alicia's head and felt the softness of her hair, and then suggested that they go to dinner together. The girl ran to change her clothes, and the man remained standing, not understanding why he did it. At this time, the red-haired man was in some dungeon with a bunch of cages and bars on the doors. Count Mile approached him, saying that the Imperial family had been very busy these past few days, and everyone was very unhappy about it, and he would like to share the force with him. The man said for the umpteenth time that he didn't need it, but the Count didn't recall that. Mail reported that everything was ready, and all that was left was to give the command. The Count considered Chiron an incompetent and narcissistic type, but he was easier to work with than lesser and or able, or... It seemed to the Count that the man had been bored the last few days, so he thought of an amusement for him. One of the men was taken out of the cage, and Karen began to think that slavery was outlawed at the legislative level, which meant that all the people in the cages were their debtors. Mail gave the order to start the show. The two men remained in a circular room that looked like an arena, and then released several wolves, which brutally mauled the men. All this was watched by a multitude of people hiding their faces under masks. Chiron wasn't interested in such shows, so all he had to do was drink his wine. The Duke asked again what he thought of the proposal to give him the force, but he just promised that he would think about it later. Kieran didn't really need to think about it, because he didn't like the idea. The next day, Alicia went to Sarah's house, because she was very bored sitting at home. The woman noticed that the Duchess had a flowery appearance, so she asked if Lesser knew that she was Phil, but the girl replied that she had decided not to burden him with it for the time being. Sarah asked the girl not to push herself, for she must have realised how important it was to write a quality book. The Duchess held out the manuscript, which had changed since their last conversation, telling the publisher's employee to read it and assess whether the book could be considered complete. Sarah studied everything thoroughly, but Alicia thought she didn't like it, because she kept looking away and stammering when she tried to say something. The girl said that everything was fine, and her behaviour was caused by the fact that the Duchess had a very different writing style. Perhaps it was due to the new plot, but the manuscript still turned out interesting. Sarah noted that the girl's works up to this point had been radical, as in The Night Returns, but the new novel, The Inquisitive Witch, was quite mild. Alicia said that this time the book was short compared to the others, so she decided to try something new. The main thing for her was that the book would sell well, and she hoped that in the future it would become even more popular than the others. The Duchess had wanted something new for a long time. She felt like she wouldn't get anywhere unless she changed her writing style, of course, a decision that could play against herself. Alicia realised that Sarah was more concerned about the change than she was. If the girl continued to experiment in writing, she might accidentally give away her identity, and she had always been very sensitive to this issue. Sarah thought the text was good, Alicia's handwriting was familiar, and the book was, as always, a hot topic. The Duchess breathed a sigh of relief, because in fact she was very worried, because she thought that Sarah would not like it. The publisher's employee thought that the girl described something personal in the novel because by the end of the book, she suddenly decided to establish relations between the characters. Sarah said that if the Duchess was having trouble expressing her feelings, she should perhaps concentrate on describing the events or developing the story further. Alicia couldn't afford to do that because then she wouldn't meet the deadline. The girl thought she would have to release this novel and the last chapters of The Return of Night at the same time for she felt the book was a little long in coming. Sarah said that it looked like Alicia was experiencing something new, for she had not been married long ago, so she might want to describe her experience in the book. Sarah said that the sales of novels had gone up a lot lately, which meant they would be working even harder. One noblewoman said she wanted to get closer to the people and would write a novel about it. She was struggling to write anything and seemed to really enjoy it. 
The girl still wasn't sure about the noblewoman's manuscripts, but wished Alicia would take a look at them, for she was the author of The Return of Night, and that gave her special status. In the evening, Alicia walked in the garden, contemplating the fact that she had spoken to the sponsors today, and they had shown far more interest than she had imagined. Except now the Duchess wanted to change the plot, because as much as she didn't write, she didn't like everything. Although in the process of creating the story, it seemed to her that everything was perfect. Literature was great for Alicia, because when reading another book, she could emphasise something new for her book. Only the Duchess began to write down new ideas about the return of night. So suddenly, Lessa appeared behind her back and started to ask her what she was doing at such a late hour. The girl quickly closed the notebook with her hand, though it was a draft. But the man liked this series and could easily understand what was written there. The girl began to think that she would be exposed in such a ridiculous way. On the other hand, it could be the right moment to tell the truth. She assumed that Lessa would be sympathetic to it, since she read her books. Alicia already wanted to tell everything, but the man began to wonder if his wife had decided to write her own work. Alicia thought that Lessa didn't understand anything, so she said that recently it was fashionable among the nobles to write their own works. Besides, she was a little embarrassed, so she forbade her husband to peek. The Duke remembered the words of Phil, that he started with small works, so it was normal to start small. Lessa hoped that one day he would find Alicia's book in a store, or maybe she would even open her own publishing house. The girl said that she would not show the book to her husband, to which he was upset, because she had been very cruel to her first and most noble reader. The next afternoon, the Duke met with his wife's older brother, who was very uncomfortable talking about his sister as a duchess. Lessa said that if the young man had no urgent news, they could continue this conversation later but now it was better for the Duke to return. Late in the evening, Alicia sat in her office and thought that if nothing changed, she would have to postpone the publication date of the book, and because of all this turmoil, she couldn't sit down and write properly. The girl decided to distract herself a little and take a walk alone, but on the way she was caught by Lesser. The man suggested his wife to sit down in the gazebo and drink a couple of glasses of selected wine. The Duchess was a little cold, so she hoped that the drink would warm her, and in response, Lessa took off his jacket and covered the girl's thin shoulders. Alicia began to feel Lessa's warmth and scent, thinking that the man had always taken care of her. The wine was strong, but had a great flavour, so it had to be drunk slowly, otherwise one could get drunk quickly. The girl liked the drink very much and decided to find out where it came from, and as it turned out, the wine was specially brought from Tar at the prince's request. The city of Tara had the second largest territory after the capital. It was rumoured to be a fertile and very beautiful land. Alicia had always wanted to go there, but she had never been able to. The Duke told her that Tara was usually warmer than their duchy, especially after the rainy season. Lessa wondered why the girl looked like she didn't like it here, so he asked his wife if she felt uncomfortable or needed anything to let her go straight to him. Alicia didn't understand why her husband was giving her such sweet speeches. She understood that Lessa wished to become closer to her, even though they had married for profit. It was fine to maintain a good relationship. After a while, the Duke's jacket was on the back of the chair, and he realised from the girl's condition that it was time for her to return to the house. Alicia couldn't take it anymore and slumped down on the table. She had thought she would never allow herself to drink in front of the Duke, because his status was much higher, and she had never imagined that she would get so drunk in front of him that she couldn't even lift a finger. Before the Duchess got drunk, she told me that she was very different from the others, because she had been a loner since she was a child. It wasn't that she didn't have friends, it was just that she never walked the same path with them. Alicia always liked to read books or walk outside rather than practicing etiquette. The girl's mother was very upset about her daughter's behavior, but luckily the girl found a business that she really enjoyed doing. Aristocrats were strange about such things, despite her skills and desire to do something. Even though Alicia didn't mention her writing, saying even that made her feel much better. After listening to the girl's speech, Lessa said that she could do anything, as there were no prohibitions for her in his house. The Duchess noticed that the bottle of wine had run out, so she offered to open another, but the Duke did not want to do that. 
because they had already drunk a volume designed for at least three people. The girl jumped up and went to get another bottle, while the Duke tried to stop her without success. When Alicia returned with the drinks, she found Lesser sleeping on a chair, went up to him and began to think that even asleep, the man looked as handsome as ever. The girl thought about it and didn't even notice when the Duke opened his eyes. After that, both were greatly embarrassed by this turn of events. Lesser began to say that he was just covering his eyes for a moment and not overdoing it with alcohol. The girl liked this attitude because she expected to drink a couple more bottles of wine with her husband. Pouring the drink into a glass, Alicia could not stop thinking that her heart almost stopped because she was so close to the Duke. The next morning, Alicia began to realise that with such a hangover, she wouldn't be able to write anything. So she decided to concentrate on thinking over the plot of the book. She didn't have a single idea for a new chapter, and she couldn't even understand how the pictures in the book were connected. The Duchess reread the book once more and realised that it wasn't the hangover. It was just that the book had the wrong information, but she still needed to walk to the herbal store because she wanted to get to work as soon as possible. In the store, the seller told Alicia that some plant was poisonous and was famous for its sweet smell, but in spite of this, it was used in medicine. After these words, the girl realised that aristocrats did not go to the store with herbs and did not ask to explain something to them. The Duchess briefly asked to be shown the rarer herbs, after which the man went to the warehouse to look for valuable goods. The girl found a door that she thought led to the warehouse, so she decided to look around in it a bit. Alicia could only open the door a couple of centimetres because it was chained on the other side. Behind it was a long corridor with a sturdy locked door at the end of it and a trail of someone's blood splattered in front of it. The girl decided not to get involved and closed the door, deciding to think about it later. Alicia was approached by Choo Choo and began to say that this store had a lot of healing herbs with a good aroma, so she should have bought some of them. On the way home, the Duchess couldn't stop thinking that of course it was good that they had managed to find many of the herbs they needed, but she hadn't been able to get her hands on some of the rare ones. Despite all this, the girl was satisfied because she was able to get answers to most of her questions about medicines and their use. At dinner, Alicia did not see her husband and because of this she began to worry. But Dame reassured her by saying that Lesser was a little busy with work so he would join her later. The Duke told her to tell his wife not to worry about anything and to start without him. Lesser sat in his office and remembered the moment when Alicia was a few centimetres away from him. At the same time, she came to his office, thinking that something had changed in her lately and she wished to have some fun. The girl stretched her hand to the head of the supposedly sleeping man and wanted to tease him already. The Duke opened his eyes and looked at the girl unhappily, saying that he knew who was near him because Dame did not usually come so close to him. Alicia asked him why he pretended to be asleep, but in response, she got a counter question about what the girl was going to do to him. The man asked Alicia why she had not come to him as soon as she woke up, but she said that she was up late and did not want to disturb the Duke. The girl said that she liked the books that the man had given her, and she was amazed at how carefully he treated the books. Lesser cared about these books, and he thought that they would help Alicia to write her own novel, because it seemed to him that the girl would be able to bring something new to the world of literature. The girl decided to support the conversation saying that she managed to think up some plots while she was reading the works of Phil. The Duke was not relieved because, unfortunately, his favourite author had abruptly stopped releasing books, and it bothered the man a lot. Besides, there was still no final volume of the book. Alicia had never realised before that she was such an irresponsible writer in the eyes of her readers. The girl suddenly turned pale and tried to leave the room, not accepting Lesser's help, who wanted to walk her to her room. Alicia crawled under the blanket and began to feel sad because now she thought she was a bad writer. In the morning, the Duchess constantly avoided seeing Lesser. She realised that she had no reason to do so, but at the sight of the man, despair came over her again after his words about the final volume. When she got to the study, the girl still didn't want to do anything, wanting to just sit and relax. Alicia tried to pull herself together but she was once again plagued by thoughts that it was heartbreaking to hear such harsh words from a reader who had even a limited edition. After getting the lion's share of motivation, 
the girl spent the entire day writing the piece. The Duchess had been sitting still all day and her whole body ached, so she decided to take a walk before going to bed. Just when the girl thought she was alone, Lesser immediately appeared behind her. Alicia asked him not to approach, so the man decided that he accidentally offended his wife with something. The Duchess decided to share the story, assuring the man that it was hers, but a close friend of hers, or rather an acquaintance of her friend who had a close friend. Lesser asked not to languish, after which the girl began to say that the man she was talking about was not famous, so the girl did not know what books came out from under his pen. Due to some circumstances, that man could not continue writing and abandoned it. His precious manuscripts were worth finishing, but the writer flatly refused to do so. With these words, Alicia was trying to say that it was not always possible to understand the true feelings of the author. When you read his books, although, she said, it was the other way around, because she too was occasionally uninspired and less productive, just like that author. Alicia said that, at least for the same reason, she couldn't finish her novel, and it was very sad. Lesser thought that he hadn't even realised that his wife was an admirer of Phil, and his words must have upset her a lot. The man was a little ashamed of the whole thing, but still, in his opinion, the girl looked so cute when she was sad. The Duke apologised to his wife and asked how he could make it up to her, to which the girl asked him to just pretend that the conversation about the book had never happened. Alicia was about to leave, but the man stopped her, suggesting that they walk together in the garden for a while. The girl started to say that it was getting late and they should go to bed, but really, she was just looking for an excuse to leave after getting drunk the other night. Lesser smugly reminded his wife about the wedding night they still hadn't had, which was specified in their contract. Alicia was surprised by these words, and she began to think that the man wanted their first night to happen right now. The girl was embarrassed, saying that she should freshen up before that, and her underwear was inappropriate. It was too sudden for her, and she wasn't ready. The Duke laughed from the expression on the girl's face, and she quickly ran away, although the man wished just to be together a little longer, and nothing more. The next day at breakfast, the couple behaved unusually, which of course Dame could not help but notice. Lesser, barely containing his emotions after yesterday, told Alicia that he wanted to go with her to Tara Manor after the rainy season was over. The man usually went there at this time of year, but winter could drag on for a month, so he decided to wait a little longer. The Tara estate was famous for its view of the sea and the land where the hot springs were. And because of this, the capital's nobility liked to go there in winter. The Duchess agreed to her husband's proposal, for there she could try many new flavours of wine. After a few more days, Lesser found himself at the riding grounds with the prince. There he met Chiron and began to wonder what he was doing here and in a horse racing suit. The young man looked like he'd had at least a bottle of wine. The blonde man asked Chiron not to speed up, as they didn't need accidents. Taxes were not meant to be spent on entertaining the young man, he said. The aristocrat spurred the young man on, believing that the man was upset that his father had not yet passed away. Kieran rode up to Lesser and congratulated him on his recent wedding, saying he was greatly surprised, for he would never have thought a man would marry the daughter of the Marquis of Weber expecting him to pick up some commoner from a neighbouring duchy. The young man was angry that the man did not answer him, but he still said that it was because of such behaviour that the aristocrat constantly failed. Chiron angrily told the Duke that after the wedding, he never went out in public, considering it a painful omission. Lesser rode away from him and pointed his horse towards the young man. Chiron's horse was frightened by this turn of events and threw the nobleman off of him. The Duke approached the young man and said that it was an accident and he would never dare to try to kill him. An intense anger clouded the nobleman's mind at that moment, causing him to think of revenge. That same night, the horse Chiron was riding was decapitated. Alicia was glad that her husband was back earlier than usual today, offering him dinner. The man could hardly believe that he was almost capable of killing Chiron. But now, looking at the girl, all bad thoughts went away by themselves. Lesser agreed to dinner, after which they went to the table. Dame wanted to say that the Duke had eaten during the recent meeting, but he was afraid that Choo Choo would give him a hard time if he told him everything. Anyone would say that the Duke really liked standing like that, 
but it seemed his charm didn't work here because Alicia was highly unpredictable. At the table, the girl noticed that all of her favorite foods and drinks were served for dinner tonight. Lesser did it on purpose so that she could enjoy the food and quietly go about her business. Lately, Alicia was often in the clouds and when she sat down to read a book, she plunged into them with her head. After marriage, it became more difficult for the girl to hide what she was doing in her free time. But there was one advantage of being a duke's wife, so she had complete freedom of action. Lesser did not follow his wife's every move, nor did he have servants for the same purpose. Alicia just wished she could tell her husband that Phil was her. The duke thanked the girl, for in his opinion, it was thanks to her that he had spent an exceptionally pleasant evening dining with her. In the morning, the girl was quietly reading another novel, as suddenly she noticed Lesser in riding clothes and decided to ask him where he was going because he was supposed to have a day off. The man told her that he had been called to the grounds to ride horses. Alicia was very eager to ride a horse, thinking that even if she got wet, she would still be happy. The girl was very happy when her husband invited her to go with him, but she was still worried that she had not warned him in advance and there might not be a horse for her. The Duke assured his wife that they should not worry, the preparations would not take long, so they should just go there leisurely. The moment Alicia got on the horse, the man decided to ask her if she knew how to ride a horse at all. Alicia modestly replied that she had once learned to ride, but after a few attempts, she quickly gave up. In fact, she was taught horseback riding from childhood because the main character of Night Returns loved horses and the girl wanted to describe it as realistically as possible. The Duchess told the man that he might not insure her and she would manage all by herself. Lesser was very well because the girl always went in a dress, but now he was confused when he saw his wife in such clothes. He thought it would be nice to go horseback riding in the duchy fields more often. The girl felt very uncomfortable on the horse. In her soul, she was already ready to participate in real races and win prizes, but her body said the opposite. Alicia didn't think it was her age, although on the other hand, she had only walked from the table to the bed. Alicia didn't want to slow Lesser down, so she asked him to ride ahead of her, saying that she preferred a slow ride so she could enjoy the views. The man realised what was wrong and asked the Duchess not to worry, for sometimes he liked to ride slowly himself. The Duke noticed that it was the first time the two of them had gone out together, meaning that there was no one else around but them. The girl had a lot of fun, so she told her husband to invite her out more often. They both had fun until the evening, and then they went back to the manor. In the office, Lesser was informed that Alicia had not spent any of his money. The man had tried to significantly increase his wife's spending budget, but she hadn't spent it at all. The marriage had been arranged out of mutual necessity, but still the Duke did not want Alicia to ever regret it, so he tried to give her everything she needed. Lesser wondered what his wife did for a living. The girl was not one of those who chased luxurious outfits, but her clothes were not bad either. But some of her books cost as much as a whole store with clothes. Choo Choo said that Alicia always carried a purse and paid with money from it. Alicia always paid in cash, and sometimes she even bought expensive gifts for the maid. The man was intrigued by Choo Choo's words, because it turned out that his wife had another side, which he knew nothing about, or had not noticed until now. After a while, dozens of gifts from the Duke were brought into Alicia's room. The servants did not stop carrying boxes, while the gifts were even more than those she had been given at the wedding. The girl opened one of the boxes and immediately found riding clothes with a note that the horse would arrive later. Choo Choo decided not to distract Alicia, leaving her to sort through the pile of gifts that had no end in sight. The next day, the girl met the Duke in the garden, showing him how the necklace presented by the man looked on her. The man simply replied that the jewellery was nice, which made the Duchess unhappy. In her opinion, Lesser must have said it was very beautiful, for it was his gift. The girl thanked him for the riding uniform, saying she would try it on for their next ride, on which she was sure to overtake her husband. In his office, the Duke thanked Choo Choo for her hard work, as she had worked hard to compile the list of gifts, so she could ask for anything she wanted. The maid pushed a sweet speech that serving Lesser and doing his bidding was the best joy of her life. And besides, the gift that the lady liked the most was chosen by a man. 
Alicia came out of her office with a completely blue face. She was sore, her throat was dry, and her eyes were tired, but she had managed to finish her writing a day earlier than originally planned. It was like a weight lifted off her shoulders, but she wanted to sleep more, and she had to have breakfast with Lesser. The Duchess, not thinking long, decided to go to sleep and then check the text again. But first she needed a drink of water, otherwise she could die of thirst. The Duke noticed the girl and called out to her, but she didn't hear it. The man thought that she wanted to be alone, so he decided to follow her to the dining room and deal with her there. The girl didn't stop, thinking it would be better to have a glass of something strong and go to bed. Lesser, who was following her, realised that she was heading for the wine cellar, but he didn't do anything about it yet. Alicia came to her senses, saying that she shouldn't do that or she might sleep the whole next day. Having decided to do without wine, Alicia headed in the other direction, leaving the incomprehensible Duke to think why she didn't notice him. In the dining room, the girl still could not find a glass of water right in front of her eyes. The man handed her a glass, which made her very frightened, because she had not noticed it until now. Lessa began to ask why the girl was awake, but she excused herself, saying that she had already fallen asleep, but at the last moment, her throat had gone dry. The man realised that Alicia was probably sitting in her cabin all night again, writing or reading hard. The man said that the Duchess obviously should have gone straight to bed right away, as she was falling asleep on the fly. The girl started to refuse, because she had to have breakfast with her husband, but he asked her not to worry, deciding to postpone the cooking until Alicia woke up. The Duchess casually said that she would like the man to join her. Lessa agreed, but still wondered if he could go into her bedroom though on the other hand, she had asked for it, so there was nothing to do. The man escorted Alicia to her room and asked the maid not to wake her until she woke up herself. The next day, the girl got out of bed and was about to go to the dining room when suddenly she found Lesser on the threshold of the room, after which she hastily closed the door because she did not want her husband to see her in her pyjamas with a nest on her head. Alicia quickly threw a blanket over herself and looked out the door, wishing the man a good morning. The cheerful Lesser replied that it had been night for a long time, but the girl did not react in any way, asking her husband to pretend that he had not seen her like that. The next morning, Alicia went to the tea house and finally managed to sort out all the accumulated manuscripts. After finishing all the chores, tea and dessert seemed especially delicious to the girl. Alicia decided to take the weekend before the book came out and spend most of it sleeping. One of the days she attended Count Dimitri's tea party, where she managed to get a lot of interesting information about the fashion world in the capital. The Duchess also met with Kiri, whom she had not seen for a long time. At this meeting, the girls discussed Elliot and things related to him now and then. Alicia even managed to visit Count Herman's wife, where his wife told her that the necklace presented to Lesser was the work of a jeweller living in the South. He produced a limited number of unique jewellery and it was very difficult to get them. So the days of the main character passed, and after a while, she received the news that the book was ready. At the meeting with the publisher's employee, the girl was able to look at the finished books for the store and at the books with the special cover that Alicia had asked for. The woman had personally made the cover for the book, and she was very proud of it, for even the books for the imperial family did not have such luxurious covers. Alicia wanted to please her husband with this book, for she thought she had done a good job, even at the cost of Lesser's money. The employee of the publishing house said that they had recently picked up a batch of books, so they should have been on the shelves of the capital stores by evening. The woman thought that in an hour, the carriage with the books would be on the main square, and that at worst, they would be delivered to the other stores by nightfall. The next day, Alicia said that on her way to the place, she wished to stop by the store in the main square. In the carriage, however, the girl thought the book might have stood out too much. You could tell she had bought it, but the Duke might have thought his wife had changed the cover herself. In addition, Alicia was happy to leave her autograph in the book, which was a total overkill. Alicia didn't know what to do next, so she decided to leave the reasoning for later. In the store, the girl looked very cautious. Despite the fact that the Duchess had written many books, her heart still beat strongly when she saw her manuscripts on the shelves. For a moment, the girl thought it would still be better to give Lesser the regular version of the book. 
while buying the book behind Alicia was her husband, not understanding what she was doing in this store. The man said that he bought a new novel, Phil. In response to this, the girl also showed the exact same book that she wanted to give to her husband. It never occurred to Alicia that Lesser might have bought the book himself. The man thanked the girl, but said he didn't have a gift for her. The girl worriedly asked her husband not to bother and just accept the book and not to worry about it. Lesser sat down at the table to read a new novel, but immediately noticed the same book, but in a beautiful ornament. He became very sad, because the man thought that the girl had bought this book and was going to give it to someone else. Alicia became embarrassed to say that in fact this book was given to her for free. Besides, it had the author's autograph, and it was meant for a man. Alicia said that this book was the only one of its kind, so Lesser had to guard it with all his might. The man gladly accepted the gift from his wife, because such a book was almost impossible to get. The girl did not stop to think that she had pulled off the best plan, and then suggested to continue reading after dinner. The Duke suggested that they dine at a table in his chambers, as today had been a particularly cold day. The girl was embarrassed that Lesser suggested going to his chambers, but still she thought it would be the usual reading. In the man's room, Alicia felt a kind of chagrin, for her husband was reading a different book than the one she had given him. Lesser noticed this and asked the girl not to worry, saying that the book given to her was standing somewhere else. In fact, the man was sorry to read the book Alicia had given him, as he didn't want to accidentally ruin it. He wrapped it in a soft cloth and put it in the safe. Only a man skilled in hacking could get to the contents of the cache, of which there were not many in the world. Alicia was afraid that the Duke would not be interested in the work, but she could tell by the man's focused look that he was fascinated. Alicia sat and just stared at the book, for she had no interest in reading it more than a dozen times. The girl got up and went to bed, while Lesser offered her to lie down together. The Duchess did not appreciate the offer, saying that in that case it would be a breach of their contract. Lesser walked the girl to her room and told her that he would keep the book she had given him with care. Alicia was relieved, for the man liked the book, though he had not read the one she had given him. Back in his chambers, the Duke was a little surprised that he couldn't concentrate on the book Fila in any way before, as he was distracted by the smell of his wife's perfume. The man thought that if he didn't get busy reading, the girl would just go back to her study, so Lesser silently pretended. The Duke decided to go through the book from the beginning without distractions, and noticed that the atmosphere of the book was much different from the author's past work. In the past, Phil's novels have had things happen that are difficult to accomplish in life, but this book, despite the fictional plot, had a lot in common with reality. The relationship between the man and woman, who previously did not get along well with each other, improved dramatically, causing Duke to have a sense of deja vu. Lesser had no idea what caused this feeling. Perhaps it was just a coincidence, or perhaps it was because of his resemblance to the main character, who had dark hair and golden eyes. Alicia was trying to sleep, as she was worried about the synopsis for the next volume of the book, but she couldn't get a nap. The next day, the girl realised that Return of Night would come to an end, not in this volume, and at least one more would have to be produced. Twenty parts were originally planned, and Alicia was going to add a small extra episode. But as it was, it was better to have it already printed along with the 21st volume. The Duchess was afraid that the manager would get in trouble because of her, so she decided to shorten the book during the editing process. When Lesser arrived for dinner, he did not find the girl at the table. He thought that lately his wife had been spending her days and nights in her office, so the man was very worried. Because he had to finish some business before leaving, he had to skip dinner often, so the Duke began to see Alicia less and less often, although they had become quite close. After the meal, the man sat down to read a book. It happened that Lesser had kept the autographed book, so he hadn't been able to open it yet, and it was only now that he would be able to examine it properly. When he saw the leaf sticking out of the book, he was horrified for a moment. Thinking it was of poor quality, Alicia sat in her office, feeling very uneasy. Usually the anxiety came when the publishing house was on deadline, but now she had plenty of time. The Duke sat puzzled, for by comparing it with the letter Phil had received earlier, it was becoming clear to him who the author was. In the afternoon on a walk, 
The man was quietly resting, sitting on a bench by the fountain, but his reflections were interrupted by the protagonist. The girl asked the Duke to rest more because he looked unimportant. Lesser was very embarrassed at meeting the girl, but still he decided to ask her something about that book. He wondered where Alicia had bought a book signed by the author. The Duchess was very bothered by this question. She thought Lesser might have asked about it, but she didn't expect that already this morning. The girl pulled herself together and quietly began to make up the fact that her friend had connections at that publishing house and he had been away a few times recently. The man realised that this book was very difficult to get, so he decided to invite this friend somewhere and have a party, for example. Lesser had recently noticed that he was not giving his wife the care she needed. In a panic, the girl began to say that this friend was very shy and did not get along well in meeting people. The Duke stopped pestering the girl with unexpected questions, which made her think that she had finally managed to get out of it. The man asked about the girl's plans, and after learning that there were none, he immediately advised Alicia not to leave the estate. The girl tried to object, but Lesser stood his ground, for he thought it was very dangerous outside the house. The Duke wanted to say the real reason, but still decided to just keep silent. Alicia was very worried about her husband, as he was always pretending that everything was fine when it wasn't. The estate workers didn't understand why Lesser was so strange today. After all, he even checked every paper and stamped it. Usually the man would stamp several times and stop if it didn't come out perfect. They were both in agreement with their words, saying that they wanted to finish the work as soon as possible. At night, Lesser offered Alicia a glass of wine, which made the girl incredibly happy. The Duke felt much better, because at last he had found a suitable reason for a serious conversation. Already in his office, the man wandered back and forth, thinking that time had stopped. The Duke could hardly contain himself from anticipation, because of which he was in a hurry to get to the meeting with Alicia. When he arrived at the gazebo, the man became very sad, as he thought that the girl had simply forgotten about their meeting. After a few minutes, Alicia came to the garden and asked Lesser to forgive her, because she had urgent matters to attend to. Over a drink, the Duke told the girl about some history with the Imperial family. This story even gave Alicia an idea for a new episode of the book, so she wished to go back and make a note as soon as possible. Thinking about her business, the protagonist noticed a stare from her husband's side. She wanted to ask him what was wrong, but Lesser interrupted her, asking if anything was bothering Alicia lately. The man promised to fulfil any request of his wife as soon as she needed it. The Duchess began to think that the man was able to elicit information from Chu Chu, but she didn't speak directly about it. The girl said she would be sure to let her know if she needed anything, but for now she was completely satisfied with everything. Lesser seconded the girl's words, not wanting her to suffer any inconvenience. Alicia felt uncomfortable deceiving someone who had spoken such lovely words to her, which made her chest start to burn. The next day, the Duke received a report that the illegal drug traffickers caught the first time were not easy to catch, even if they were tortured. The traffickers had made many sorties to escape, but after security was beefed up, the fugitives were apprehended when they tried to hide in another neighbourhood. Before leaving for Tara, Lesser had thought he would continue to worry if this issue wasn't resolved, but thankfully things were starting to get a little better, though there were still a bunch of things that needed to be resolved. The blonde picked up a vial from the table and began to talk about it. The bottle contained cocoon, a powerful hallucinogen that was extremely addictive. For this reason, it was also used to turn soldiers into living weapons in the past during wars. Due to the side effects, since the reign of the previous emperor, the turnover of cocoon had almost decreased to zero. The evidence of the case showed that such dangerous hallucinogens were attempted to be distributed again by violating state laws. All of this was a very serious nature of the crime. Blondin thought that even the gangs that had slipped away would be saving their own skins first, so they could give them a little respite. The most beautiful ornament illuminated Alicia's study as she opened the box with the pen presented by Lesser. She didn't think it was necessary to give her such a luxurious pen, but she took it because she felt guilty about constantly refusing her husband's gifts. After the Duchess had given her husband a signed copy of The Uncommon Witch, he had become impossibly kind. Alicia didn't know what to do. She wanted to get closer to Lesser too, but the more she grew attached to him, 
the more she thought it would be hard for the man to contain his reaction when he found out about her artistic endeavours. Suddenly, the girl jumped up, because she realised that today she had not written a single letter for the book, so she decided to get some air and put her thoughts in order. Walking through the park, Alicia thought that she could use someone to talk to and rely on. The Duchess wished with all her heart that such a man would be her husband, who would spend his life by her side, but she was afraid of such thoughts. She wanted to get to know Lesser better and not be in a hurry, thinking that no matter how good the man was, the fact that she was writing books would have to remain in his ignorance. In Alicia's opinion, the man would immediately throw away all the books if he found out that Phil was actually her. If the expectation was great for her, the disappointment was also great, and because of this, she decided not to hope for anything, because the girl herself did not understand her feelings. In the Duke's office, Dame talked about the documents that contained the results of the handwriting examination. The man looked at the results and asked the butler to find out all the information about the author, named Phil, using any means necessary. The piece of paper that fell out of the book in Lesser's room had sketches written in the author's hand. Among the sketches, there was a signature of husband next to the name Lesser, so the Duke was greatly surprised. Even the examination showed that the two handwritings were completely the same. The man began to remember talking about how the author of his favourite novel had suddenly suspended activities indefinitely, right in front of his wife. Lesser began to guess little by little what was really going on here, so he didn't know how he should proceed. Karen sat in his manor and cursed Lesser, who had easily forced the smugglers to flee, temporarily cutting off the supply of cocoon. The young man was shaking violently, for he urgently needed a new dose of the drug. Suddenly, the Count came to Kieran's house with a bottle of cocoon. The young man ran up to Mile in a hurry, trying to take the vial from him. But the man simply started to say that the drug wasn't that hard to get nowadays. Chiron began to ask the man about what he had to do to get the Count to give the drug to him. In the man's estimation, the young man was already at the stage of serious addiction. Until recently, the Count's stance had been one of observation, but now things had changed drastically. The man informed Kieran that if he wanted the cocoon, he would have to do some hard work. First, they had to get rid of the traps set around the Imperial Palace and Count Mile. The man assured that if he too fell into the hands of the Crown Prince, then the young man would not be able to continue receiving shipments of goods for long. At dinner, the girl held her fork strangely, which Lesser couldn't help but notice. Alicia told him that she was fine. It was just that her arm and palm had been sore lately. The Duke realised that her arm was most likely sore from writing with a quill for so long, and the same fact made him believe that his wife could have been Phil. Lesser wanted to fix something, so he suggested to the girl to arrange a tea party after dinner, but Alicia rejected this proposal, saying that she had too much work that urgently needed to be finished. At the same time, Dame was on his way to rest. In recent days, he had been getting up earlier and getting to work, but even so, he had plenty to do. He had to assist the Duke every day, to deliver news from Tara, to make a report on the welfare of the capital, to study the significant and insignificant affairs in the duchy, and to learn all the information about Fila. The hardest condition in this endeavour was to learn everything without coercion or violence. The guy had no choice but to find out everything by any means necessary. Dame tried and submitted requests, but the publisher was like a mouthful of water, so the author managed to hide very well. In the butler's opinion, both the publisher and the writer were overreacting to the secrecy. He was interrupted by the sudden appearance of Alicia, who decided to take a walk after a hard day. The girl was tense, because right now she had a piece of paper with sketches of the plot of Night Returns in her hands. The girl began to justify herself to Dame, saying that she was just out for a walk. In fact, the final chapter of The Return of Night was not working out in any way, so the Duchess walked around and put her thoughts in order. The girl started to ask the guy why he was still here, and in response she got a long story about unfair and routine work. The butler was very uncomfortable because he had never had a face-to-face -face conversation with Alicia. The girl said she should have scolded the Duke who didn't appreciate his subordinates, 
but Dame convinced her that he just lacked skills. That's why he had a whole mountain of things to do. Alicia still asked the young man not to overdo it, because he was an important person, trusted by her husband. Dame never thought that he could hear such praise from a girl, which made him feel very pleased. The girl quickly said goodbye and went back to her room before the butler had any more questions. Despite the fact that Alicia hadn't slept all night, she was in a good mood, so she didn't feel tired at all. By morning, she had finally finished the 20th volume of The Return of Night, but of course there were still revisions to be made, and the next volume had to be written. However, the girl didn't think she could meet some deadlines before she left for Tara. Alicia didn't think she could really do it, and if she endured a little longer and wrote the next volume, she would soon be able to finish the book that everyone was waiting for. That same afternoon, the best masseurs came to see her, after which Alicia's arms and shoulders finally stopped hurting. Choo Choo came, and the Duchess asked her to tell the cook to prepare something nutritious for breakfast, hinting that stew would be the best option. The maids had heard that oysters were good for physical strength and beauty, so they offered the girl to try them, but she was afraid of getting indigestion after such a breakfast. The girls began to stare at the Duchess, which made her a little angry. The girls said there was nothing wrong with that, for she was just watching the heroine read the newspaper, holding it gracefully in her hands. Alicia offered the maid to sit next to her and read with her, but she refused, because she didn't know the imperial language. The Duchess began to say that if the girl ever wanted to, she could help her learn to read. It wasn't that difficult for her, so if the maids became curious, they could always turn to Alicia. The Duchess had already taught Lily the basic imperial language once, so it should be easier the second time around. Suddenly, the girl read about Estius and began to wonder who he was. The actions of the nobility of the Golden Age, which Estius described, took place in aristocratic society, which were associated with vanity and passionate feelings of the representatives of the upper classes. This writer's book was popular for its evocative narrative and harsh criticism of aristocratic society. It was the first time Alicia had heard of Estius, and the title of his book was too bold. The book cost about a month's wages for a labourer, so most readers were aristocrats. Since such a story was published in book form, it means that the author wanted the aristocrats to read it personally, with their own eyes. Despite the freedom of the press, because the main group of consumers is defined, writers were quite careful with the material for writing books, filtering out sensitive topics. Once again, Lesser was in his office, thinking he had given Dame an overly complicated assignment. It had been several days since the man had asked the butler to find all the information about Phil, and still no word. Duke wanted to know at least one more detail about his favourite author, for example, whether he had a favourite kind of pen. Come to think of it, Alicia was like Phil. When Lesser asked if she needed anything, the girl only smiled and said she was content with her life in the duchy. The man had no choice but to recognise and care for his wife step by step. For example, he should have given her a first-class writing desk, limited edition, and sold by national minorities in the South, which was currently being carried on a ship. The table was from centuries-old trees that only grow there and would likely be made several times a year. The table was said to be so hard that it would not curve even after several decades. It also had a soothing aroma, so it was perfect for long hours of reading. The Duke thought that Alicia would be uncomfortable, even though he hadn't told her about this gift yet. Besides, if the girl needed the book, he ordered to prepare everything, so that even if the book was impossible to buy in the Empire, it would still be here. The man wanted to give his wife joy, to open her heart even more. At this point, Lesser began to not understand why he was going so far for Alicia. When he went out into the hallway, he would leave the door open, waiting for the girl to come down the stairs again and shake his hand. This was the way, without doubt, Alicia always appeared before his eyes. Lesser was constantly tormented by this curiosity, whether the girl would shake hands with a radiant smile with anyone else but him. The more the Duke filled his head with such foolish thoughts, the more his mood worsened. The man came to the conclusion that it would be enough for him if Alicia would just look only at him, hoping that the girl shared the same feelings with him. After all this, Lesser was forced to admit that his character had changed a lot after marrying the girl. 
The heroine went out for a walk to think about how to be further because the Duke constantly gave her beautiful gifts. On the way to the bridge over the river, the girl met Lessa and he began to ask if she liked plays. The man was very happy when Alicia agreed, from which he decided not to lose a minute and immediately go to the viewing. A famous travelling troupe wandering across the continent was going to stay in the city for a month and put on performances. The girl thought that this group was really famous because there was a loud clamour from the side of the hall. The music started and the performance began. Alicia began to think that the reason was the fact that the aristocrats rode non-stop and the book, The Nobility of the Golden Age, immediately came to her mind. The atmosphere and setting were very different, but the girl couldn't understand why the nobles were so amused by the fact that the travelling troupe were foreigners. After the performance, the heroine told him that her heart had been pounding hard in her chest during the performance, and she liked the last musical composition. At first, Lessa was afraid that the girl might not have been interested, but looking at the expression on her face, he thought she was delighted. The Duke had heard somewhere that writers said that the more they saw and experienced, the better they wrote. It was a rare performance in the capital, so the man really wanted to show it to his wife. Suddenly, Alicia was accidentally pushed, and a huge crowd of people appeared around them. The man suggested taking his time and leaving when all the people had passed, and it would be much safer. Lessa began to remember from when his head had been filled with Alicia. He supposed it had happened when he had learned that the girl was Phil, but it could have happened earlier. But none of that mattered to the man anymore, because Alicia's world had dissolved into the Phil lyrics he liked so much. In the end, all Lessa liked was the heroine. The men had long since passed, but there was still no way the Duke was going to let the girl go. It was getting late, so the girl suggested they grab a bite to eat at a nearby restaurant. The couple went to eat, while Lessa thought he wanted very much to tell Alicia that he liked her. At the restaurant, the girl remembered telling her husband stories about the full moon. She was really uncomfortable that night, for she had never thought she would be so comfortable with the Duke. They talked for a long time about how comfortable they were with each other, and then they decided to have some local drinks, which kept them up until late at night. The next day, Alicia came to the man's office and handed over the books he had lent her. Dame realised that the couple was about to have a serious conversation, so he decided to leave them alone. Although the heroine saw her husband's office not for the first time, but still even now she was amazed by its luxury. Lessa coldly remarked that the girl had gotten quite close to Dame. Alicia began to assure him that it wasn't true. It was just that they had recently exchanged greetings at dawn, and because of that, they had gotten better at communicating. The man became angry, for he wanted badly to know what was meant from the greetings. The girl tried to reassure her husband, saying that she had just bumped into each other a few times at dawn and said hello, and there was nothing in it that Lessa could think of. The man immediately cheered up, and offered the girl a tour of his office, for he had long ago noticed that she was very interested in it. The first thing Alicia did was to go to the shelf of books and ask if the Duke really liked all his books that much. As it turned out, the man didn't really love them, but he often received them as gifts. The Duchess immediately wanted to know how many books there were in the Imperial family. As much as Lesser didn't want to admit it, the Imperial family did indeed have the most books. The man said that if Alicia wanted to, she could use the Imperial Library as well, because he belonged to the Emperor's family. She asked her husband to lend her two books, and when he allowed her to do so, she started to descend the stairs. On the way down, Alicia stepped on the edge of her dress and started to fall, but luckily she landed right on Lesser. The girl was quite worried about the man, while the man joked about how the first time they met, there was something similar. Although his right arm was hurting very badly, the man stood up, saying that he wasn't badly bruised, so Alicia couldn't worry about him. The girl thought that no matter what, she still should have called for help, after which the Duchess ran out and looked for Dame and the healer. The doctor examined the Duke and concluded that he had broken his arm, or to be more precise, his bone had cracked. Because of the long search for the healer, his arm was swollen, and now it would take about a day to see the exact effects of such a serious injury. The doctor thought it was necessary to monitor Lesser's arm for at least another week, and if the symptoms lasted longer, it could be two to four weeks. The man left painkillers and medicine to reduce the swelling, 
then promised to come back the next day. When they were alone again, Alicia asked her husband what he was going to do, because he had a lot of other things to do. Lessa assured her that he would recover quickly, just have to postpone the trip to Tara. The girl felt guilty, so she promised that until the man recovered, she would help in any way she could. Suddenly, Lessa's arm was very sore, which made Alicia think that the healer was a common charlatan, because he had recently changed his words from fracture to crack. The Duke assured the girl that the man was not a charlatan, and her arm was not so badly hurt. As a sign of apology, Alicia promised her husband to do anything for him. The man was very embarrassed, but still this situation was very useful for him for a short time. The Duke thought it over, and asked the girl not to forget about the promise she had made. The next day, Alicia was serious about helping Lesser until his arm recovered. The man noticed from the doorstep that the girl had changed her hairstyle, but she replied that she had just neatly gathered her hair to work harder. The Duke decided to praise the hairstyle, saying it reminded him of a ponytail. The Duchess began to sort through the paperwork. Lesser advised her to put the complicated documents in one pile, and then Dame would deal with them. On one of the documents, the girl was confused by the repeated word Devdoa, which sounded like a Maltese name but was actually from the country of Saran. This document was a certificate of importation of goods for the imperial family. The goods came from Soran, but the name given was exactly like a Maltese name. There was no pronunciation of D and A in Soranus, and besides, the two countries were enemies. This man could have emigrated, but it was hard enough to live with a Maltese name in Saran because there was severe discrimination Saran and the state of Malta were places that could be reached by ocean-going boat. Lesser wondered if his wife spoke a foreign language. Alicia didn't know what to say, since she hadn't seen the language except for the time she'd tried to come up with names for characters. The Duchess had just studied the language for a while, while she fumbled around in dictionaries to come up with unusual names. Alicia told her husband that she only knew a few words, so she could not say that she understood anything about the language. She was only a little interested, because she had seen some things, but she had already forgotten everything. The man understood the whole situation, and decided to put these documents aside just in case, saying that perhaps that was enough work for today. Lesser's arm was starting to hurt again, so he decided to rest for a while, after which it should go away. It was a big revelation to the man to realise that being crippled wasn't so bad. Without much thought, the man suggested a tea party after dinner. Alicia wanted to tease her husband, but he noticed her approach and stopped the girl's hand. From the man's gaze, the heroine's heart clenched strongly, because of which she felt so unusual at these moments. Choo Choo brought an excellent apple pie, and the couple began to have tea. The girl did not understand why Lessa was looking at her so intently. The Duke saw his wife as an excellent beauty, so he couldn't take his eyes off her. In fact, he had something to say today, and it would be nice if they could spend more time together. As the man insisted, the girl agreed to his words, going to reduce the day's work and allocate a little more time during the day. Even that was not enough for Lesser, because he wanted to see the girl at night as well. Alicia began to say that it would be a little difficult to see her at night, because she should have slept more. The girl justified hers by saying that they had agreed to sleep separately but Lesser explained to her that it was only about sleep and they could renegotiate the contract anyway. The Duke began to remind the girl of the clause in the contract about the heir, so they should have gotten even closer. Alicia was aware of this and also wanted to get closer to the Duke, but still she decided not to rush, suggesting to talk about everything tomorrow. Back in the room, the girl came across a curious article in the newspaper. It said that the author of The Nobility of the Golden Age, Estius, and the author of Return of Night, Phil, was the same person. The author of the article wondered if Phil was trying to keep his existence under wraps, using a different pseudonym in the face of persistent tracking by the Imperial newspapers. Alicia was furious at those words, for there had been no tracking of her. The Duchess summoned Chucha and asked her to contact her friend from the publishing house, as the girl had something to discuss, so the maid should make an appointment after lunch. In addition, the heroine ordered to let her know if they would have, knowing the golden age after the bookstores opened. Afterward, Alicia went to Lesser's office to tell him about her business trip today. The man calmed her down, 
telling her that the rest of the paperwork would be handled by Dame, and she had nothing to worry about. Seeing today's paper on the Duke's desk, the girl almost gibbered that Estius was not Phil. At the meeting with the publisher's employee, Alicia tried to find out who the author of Estius was, but the girl couldn't tell her because it was out of her jurisdiction. The girl had already sent a request to check how that article had been published. First of all, a column would be released tomorrow from their publisher, revealing the truth that Estius was not Phil. The publisher's employee had been following the writer of The Nobility of the Golden Age lately because he was at the centre of much controversy, but she had little to learn. Today's article was on the front page of the newspaper. So many readers of Return of Night must have read it. The publisher said he would try his best, but because the article with the excuse could not appear on the front page, it was impossible to prevent all the damage that had already been done. Besides, there would be those who would not believe the denials. The girl advised to postpone the 20th volume of Night Returns. In any case, because of the problems, sales might have fallen, or the author himself might have been harmed. After editing the manuscript provided by Alicia, it was better to release the volume after a few months of observing people's reactions, and only after that time people should have forgotten what had happened. The girl was struck by the fact that Estius himself did not refute what he had said in the newspaper, even though he himself knew very well that he was not Phil. The next day, Alicia's explanation about the misunderstanding on the part of the readers appeared on the front page of the newspaper. The girl could not believe her own eyes, because only yesterday the manager had told her that it was impossible to do such a thing. The article ran twice and was published on the front page, and it turned out that people would see articles about the fillet more than about Estius. With a fine mood, the Duchess decided to take a walk in the garden, and met a lonely lesser breathing fresh air in it. The girl immediately began to inquire about the condition of her husband's hand, but he assured her that he would soon recover without any problems. The man also said that he had thought hard and reviewed the prenuptial agreement, and it seemed to him that it had too many gaps, so they should make some changes to it. 